Hello, Namaskar. This is TVR English, and it's time to roll the World Prime Time Bulletin Olympic Special Edition with me, Anukriti Sharma. But before we do that, let's take a look at the news which are making the national headlines today. A tragic collision between a double-decker bus and a car on the Agra Lucknow Expressway resulted in the deaths of seven people. This accident occurred after midnight and the injured, many of whom were asleep at the time, have now been admitted to the Sci-Fi Medical College for treatment. Approximately 50 patients are receiving care with 6 to 7 in critical conditions. The exact details of the accident remain unclear to many of the injured as they were obviously unaware of the circumstances that led to this collision. जिसमें 50 के करीब मरीज आए हैं, इसमें 6 बीडी आए हैं और बाकी सबका इलाज चल रहा है। कितने मरीज गंभीर है स्थिति है जिनकी? 6-7 मरीज गंभीर हैं, जिनका इलाज चल रहा है। कौन कौन हम हमारी लड़की और एक छोटी नंग थी और एक अम्मा थी तो ये हादसा हुआ आपको पता चला कैसे हुआ हादसा ये बोल रही थी एक लड़की बाथरूम करने गई तो बोल रही थी ड्राइवर दारू की पी रहा था तो आगे से एक एक चार पहिया आ रही थी वो एक बचाने में गाड़ी पलट गई अच्छा तो कितने लोग घायल हुए कुछ घायल तो सारे लोग हो गए सारे सारे और आठ लोग तो मौत हो गए तो बस नीचे गिर गई थी हाँ बहुत नीचे से गिरी हुई थी the BJP organized a Jhumke Swachhata Abhiyan program in Delhi with BJP MP Basmi Swaraj actively participating in it. She conveyed the importance of cleanliness by taking a part in the sweeping activities. And during this event at the Rajiv Gandhi camp, Swaraj highlighted that the initiative aims to improve the living conditions of those residents. She noted that the Swachhata Abhiyan, which was started in 2014, has evolved into a widespread movement reflecting its growth impact on community sanitation and awareness. आज हम लोग राजीव गांधी कैंप में आए हैं हमारे बहुत ही कर्मठ पार्षद यहाँ के उमंग बजाज जी के साथ हमारे बहुत ही मैं कहूँगी मोदी जी के सफल सवार हमारे मंडल अध्यक्ष यहाँ पर मंडल राम जी और राजीव गांधी कैंप के मेरे भाई सोनू जी उनके पूरे परिवार अपने परिवार के साथ यहाँ पर 
झुग्गी विस्तारक अभियान के तहत स्वच्छता अभियान के लिए और बाद में हम लोग गए थे जी नारायणा विलेज में जाकर हमने आज वृक्षारोपण भी करा है और वहां पर एक गेट का इनोग्रेशन भी करा है ये छोटी छोटी मुहिम है लोगों की जिंदगी में सहूलियत लाने की स्वच्छता एक ऐसा अभियान है जो हमारे यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने दो से चलाया था और मुझे लगता है The United States and Russia carried out a historic prisoner exchange on August 1st under which two dozen detainees including the former US Marine Paul Varam and Wall Street Journal reporter Ivan Grishkovich are being released the media has reported during a rally in Atlanta Republican contender Donald Trump said that if Harris would win then a never ending stream of illegal alien rapists and as 13 animals and child predators would flood into their communities and if he would win on day 1 they would begin the largest deportation operation in american history because they have no choice no country can sustain this corruption this massive swap was the result of years of complicated behind the scenes negotiations involving the us Russia, Belarus and Germany ultimately leading Berlin to agree to Moscow's key demand releasing the convicted Russian assassin Vadim Krasikov take a look a never ending stream of illegal alien rapists MS13 animals and child predators will flood into your communities if i win on day 1 we will begin the largest deportation operation in american history We have no choice. We have no choice. No country can sustain this. To further protect Georgia workers, I will revoke China's most favored nation trade status. I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If China or any other country makes us pay a 100 or 200 percent tariff, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent right back. You heard us. We heard you. It's an I. The Maharashtra Congress held a significant meeting to discuss strategies for the upcoming assembly elections in the state. Key figures in attendance included Maharashtra Congress in charge Ramesh Chennithella, State Congress President Nana Patole, along with other prominent leaders such as Prithvi Raj Chavan, Bala Sahib Thorat, Naseem Khan, and Nitin Raut. Now this meeting aims to coordinate election plans and address key issues as the party prepares for the electoral challenges ahead. and JDS leader H.D. Devagora traveled on the Delhi Metro today. This visit underscores his engagement with urban transportation systems and may reflect an interest in understanding public transit infrastructure. Now, such public appearances often highlight a leader's connection with contemporary issues and efforts to relate to the experiences of the ordinary citizens of the country.
Medical shops have been playing with people's lives by selling expired medicines. Private hospital management makes money by selling expired medicines to children and patients. Corruption is absolutely rampant in the medical shops of the joint Warangal district. The corruption going on in one of the private hospitals of the Hanma Konda has come to light of late. Expired medicines are being sold in the medical shop of Rohini Hospital in the city. Officials came to the scene after getting this information and the Drug Control Board Adharata members and the World Consumer Act representatives caught the sellers red-handed. Officials said that a complaint has been received that the poor and the middle class patients are being targeted and they are being sold these expired medicines, medicines past their expiry date. It is being said that certain inspections have been done and a complaint was also lodged with the district drug controller as it was confirmed that the expired medicines were being sold. Officials have issued show cause notices to this hospital. and now it's time for our next segment sports these days it's the paris olympics games that are making to the headlines every day and we promise to bring you the latest on the world's top athletes as they go for the gold in France. Mary Bhakar is all set to be India's flag bearer at the Paris Olympics closing ceremony. The star Indian shooter Mary Bhakar, who opened India's medal account in the ongoing Paris Olympics this year by winning a bronze medal in the women's 10-meter air pistol event on July 28th, is set to become India's flag bearer at the Paris Olympics closing ceremony. This closing ceremony of the Paris Olympics is scheduled to take place on August 11th. According to the latest media reports, Indian Olympic Association sources have stated that the star shooter Bhakar, who is the first Indian female shooter to win an Olympic medal and the first Indian to win two Olympic medals in a single edition, will be the country's flag bearer in the closing ceremony. The name of the men's flag bearer for the ceremony is yet to be confirmed though. Having narrowly missed the bronze medal in the women's 25-meter pistol event at the Paris Olympics, Mary Bhakar, who won two medals in the mega global event, said that she needed to work harder in the future. She also spoke about her Olympic journey so far. Bhakar finished fourth in the women's 25-meter pistol shooting event at the Paris Olympics on Saturday. Manu, who was participating in her second Olympics this year, after making her debut three years ago in Tokyo, finished third in the women's 10-meter air pistol event and then on July 30th, she joined hands with Sarabjot Singh to win a bronze medal in the 10-meter air pistol mixed team event by getting the better of the South Korean team. Yesterday, she finished fourth in the women's 25-meter sports pistol final to narrowly miss the chance of becoming the most successful athlete for India in the Olympic history. A total of four athletes, Norman Pritchard, Sushil Kumar, P.V. Sindhu and Manu Bhakar have won two Olympic medals for India so far. Tokyo Olympic gold medalist Neeraj Chopra, silver medalist Mirabai Chanu and bronze medalist Lovlina Bhargoen will have a chance to join Pritchard, Sushil, Sindhu and Bhakar in the elite list next week when they will participate in their respective events at the Paris Olympics this year. Chopra, who created history by winning a gold medal in the javelin throw event of the Tokyo Olympics, would likely be defending his title in the French capital and become the first Indian to win two gold medals in the Olympics. The javelin throw final is scheduled to take place on August 8th. Here's a report. 
how much efforts you put in that thing i'm uh, happy for now but need to work even harder in the future training to wahi soch ke karti thi ki is baar regret nahi karna hai is baar ye nahi sochna hai ki yaar फिर से मतलब फोर्थ फिफ्थ पोजीशन पे रह गई आई हैव शॉर्ट मैचेस इन इन फीवर आई हैव शॉर्ट मैचेस व्हेन आई एम फीलिंग रियली टायर्ड रियली लो आई हैव बॉडी पेन आई हैव सो मेनी थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन विद माय सेल्फ आई हैव किप पंद्रह दिन को तब भी सपोर्ट करें जब वो इतना अच्छा नहीं कर रहे हैं ताकि वो एक्चुअली में मेंटली और स्ट्रॉन्ग होकर आगे आए और जीते मैडम आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू हैव अ कोच लाइक हिम एंड आई होप लाइक मेनी पीपल यू हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ सपोर्ट दैट आई डू इट हैज बीन अ ग्रेट ग्रेट शो फॉर मी आई हैव बीन शूटिंग रियली वेल दीज पास्ट आई थिंक फाइव सिक्स डेज हैव बीन amazing i um, shot really well in all the qualifications then the final rounds were also great uh, so two bronzes and one fourth position so i think i'm uh, happy for now but need to work even harder in the future manu you were shooting brilliantly in the 25 meter pistol you came second in the qualification and then when you talk about the performance here you were at number 2 position at mm-hmm. one point Where do you think just missed out by your whisker? Where and that shoot off happened? Well, now how you say it makes me feel bad, but uh, I tried my best, and that's only uh, that I can control. But uh, that that was not enough, so I need to put in more efforts and more hard work. But talking about your, you know, I mean, everybody knows that you shot brilliantly in all the three events, and you know, a shot here and a shot there can be can be uh, can make the difference in yes. any any sport, winning yes. or losing. so this is where you think that uh, sports is like what it is <laughs> so i think uh, i i believe that all the people who have made it to the tokyo and uh, to the olympics actually to any olympics i think they are equal we can't be like okay this one is better or this one is world number 1 this one is world number 10 so i don't believe in all that anymore um, because last time around we had so many world number 1s and 2s but they did not make it to the finals so um, i was only thinking about everyone here is the same and uh, it's it's the moment like it's a matter of how much efforts you put in that will decide who is the champion who is not but manu hame yaad hai aaj bhi tokyo mein hum sab aapko dekh rahe the to wahan par unfortunate ek incident hua gun malfunction hua uske baad aap wahan pe aap medal nahi la paye fir yahan par aake भाई दो मेडल जीती तो क्या वो एक वेंजेंस था क्या मेक इट अप फॉर जो टोक्यो में छूटा ना यहाँ डबल ट्रिपल करके आना है तो क्या एक वो चीज कभी कहते हैं वो चीज दिमाग में चल रहा था कभी भी ट्रेनिंग तो वही सोच के करती थी कि इस बार रिग्रेट नहीं करना इस बार ये नहीं सोचना है कि यार फिर से मतलब फोर्थ फिफ्थ पोजिशन पे रह गई तो इस बार ये भी सोचा था जब भी कुछ भी करती थी रूटीन में एक्सरसाइज हो गया चाहे ट्रेनिंग हो गया चाहे टाइम पे सोना टाइम पे उठना कुछ भी हो गया बस मैं हमेशा यही सोच रही थी कि इस बार ना कुछ भी मतलब पूरी कोशिश करूंगी रिग्रेट नहीं करना तो आ, और एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट्स डालती थी कि और और ज्यादा कुछ और ज्यादा और मेहनत अब यहाँ पर मैं जैसा कि देख रहा हूँ सिर्फ आप ही का नहीं बाकी शूटर्स ने भी बहुत अच्छा अच्छा यू नो आपने देखा सरबजोत आपके साथ मेडल जीते फिर हमने देखा स्वप्निल को साले उन्होंने भी मेडल जीता तो आपका परफॉर्मेंस तो जबरदस्त रहा है बाकी शूटर्स ने भी बहुत ही अच्छा परफॉर्म किया है बिल्कुल बिल्कुल क्या बोलेंगे शूटिंग परफॉर्मेंस मोर टू कम्पनी मैं बोलूंगी कि काफ़ी प्रोग्रेस देखने को मिल रही है और काफ़ी एथलीट्स ने काफ़ी ज़्यादा अच्छी परफॉर्मेंस दी है और फाइनल्स में भी बहुत सारे लोग इस बार आए हैं स्पेशली अर्जुन आई फील यू अर्जुन बबूता हु इज़ फोर्थ इन हिज एयर राइफल फाइनल्स आई थिंक ही डेड अ ग्रेट जॉब इट इज़ मैटर ऑफ एक दो शॉर्ट्स जिसमें थोड़ा इधर थोड़ा उधर की वजह से रह जाता है एंड टूडे आई कैन फील दैट सो आई होप कि If you've been tracking the Olympics you must have seen the story it is not about medals it is not about a new record it's about an athlete's gender here's what happened a round of 16 boxing matches was underway on Thursday Italy's Angelina Carini versus Algeria's Imane Khalif the match lasted just 46 seconds Khalif landed some brutal blows in the opening seconds so Carini threw in the towel The Italian broke down later. She said she'd never been punched like this before. So what exactly happened here? Well, Khalif had failed a gender test last year, so she has been called a trans woman, someone who was born a male and later transitioned to a woman. You can see why this is worrying. Suppose a person has been through 
male puberty, they have longer arms, they have bigger and stronger muscles and longer legs. So when they transition to being a woman, they retain some of those advantages. And we are not the ones who are saying this. World Athletics admitted to this in their report, which is why letting trans women compete in women's sports is so controversial. The argument is that it is unfair. So everyone jumped into this controversy. Elon Musk, J.K. Rowling, Donald Trump, all of them. Even Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney. All of them said that a man had beaten up a woman. Now, I know this is a sensitive issue. So first, let's look at the facts. Is Imane Khalif a trans woman? The fact is that she's not. There are no transgender athletes at the Paris Olympics this year. Khalif was born a woman, she has female reproductive organs and she has always participated in events for women. Let's also look at her track record. In 2018, she took part in the Women's World Boxing Championship. She finished 17th. In 2021, she took part in the Tokyo Olympics. She was knocked out in the quarters. In 2022, she participated in Istanbul's Women's World Boxing Championship, where she finished second. It was only last year that her gender was questioned. Khalif was disqualified from the 2023 World Championship, which is organized by the IBA or the International Boxing Association. They disqualified her. And why was she disqualified? Because of a medical test. The IBA has not released the complete details yet, but one official said that Khalif had male chromosome combination. What does that mean? Men have XY chromosomes and women have XX chromosomes. And the IBA said that Khalif had the XY combination. So she and another boxer both were disqualified. Then how is she competing this year in Paris? Because the IBA is not recognized by the Olympics Association, so the rules in Paris are different. They look at the gender on the passport, and they also have their own medical tests, so the organizers say that this controversy is completely baseless. Let's focus on the medical angle now. Why does Khalif have the XY chromosomes? It's a rare condition involving genes and hormones. You may have heard of the hormone testosterone. Women are also capable of producing testosterone, but in very small amounts. Except in some women, it is different. Their bodies naturally produce more testosterone, and those women may not fit into society's definition of a woman. And that's the controversy here, basically. Should such women be allowed in female sports? There are two camps here, two sets of arguments. One camp says, what is the problem? Athletes always benefit from natural advantages. Some are taller than others, some have longer limbs. If all of that is fine, why is this different? The other camp says, it is different. Testosterone is the difference. It gives these women an unfair competitive edge and in sports like boxing, it can be outrightly dangerous. So what's the way out? Well, first I'll tell you what's not the way out. Hate mongering. Imani Khalif was born a biological woman. She has never undergone sex change procedures. In fact, it's illegal in her country. So to call her a man is unacceptable. And so is targeting the entire trans community. Some celebrities have realized this mistake like professional fighter Logan Paul. He first called Khalif a man and later he apologized for spreading misinformation. And the same applies to the other side as well. You cannot use ideology to decide this debate. Many people may identify differently from their assigned gender at birth, but in sports, that alone is not enough. You need to back it up with science. There are so many sports scientists in this world. Bring the best ones together, organize trials and studies, understand the science, and then take an informed, definitive call. You cannot have one set of rules for the World Boxing Championship and another set for the Olympics. So the governing bodies need to step up here. Their failures led to this controversy in the first place and now they must resolve it.
testosterone is not a perfect test. Mm. Many women can have testosterone which is in what would be called male levels um, and still be women and still compete as women. So this panacea, this idea that suddenly you test, do one test for testosterone and that's also everything out, not the case I'm afraid. This involves uh, real people, mm. and we're talking about real people's lives here. Mm. They have competed, and they continue to pe compete in the women's competition. Um, and, and by the way, this isn't, I should make this absolutely clear for everyone, this is not a transgender issue. I know you know that, but I think there has been some misreporting on this, and I think it's very, very important. event in the world. There are wins, there are losses, and obviously there are controversies and the Paris games are no different. From Chinese athletes under the scanner for doping to a convicted rapist taking part in the games. Diplomatic tips with referees, allegations of cheating, and even photos with judges. Everything seems to be a scandal at the Paris games this year. Our last story looks at the top controversies of the Olympics so far. The Olympics may have just started, but there's no stopping Yang Yufei. After all, she's China's butterfly queen. Since the Olympics began, she has won three bronze medals. A great achievement for many out there, but for Yang, it's bittersweet. She has been eyeing the gold, and it was not unrealistic. After all, she's one of China's best swimmers, but her run may have been derailed by a controversy. In the last 10 days, the Chinese swimming team has undergone 200 doping tests, some odd 200. It's because of a doping scandal at the Tokyo Olympics. Half of the team tested positive for a banned substance, a banned heart drug called trimetazine. The swimmers were soon cleared by the Chinese anti-doping agency. Beijing said that they were contaminated, but the pressure is apparent. China believes that the testing regime is hurting the team, but while all eyes are on China's swimming team, here's someone who's trying to slip under the radar. I'm talking about Steven van der Velde. He's a Dutch volleyball player. He raped a 12-year-old girl. He was convicted. He was sentenced to four years in prison. Yet, he was released after just 12 months, and now he's playing for the Dutch team at the games. The Dutch Volleyball Federation may have no comments, but spectators did not let it go easily. They booed him right before his opening match. The 29-year-old eventually lost the match to Italy. He did not have much to say about the loss, but the losses are a touchy subject at this year's games. Take the men's fencing event, for example. Italy's Filippo Macchi lost against Hong Kong's Chung Ka Long and citizens were furious. Italians said that they were robbed, so Hong Kong hit back. Netizens responded with posts on pineapple pizza and pasta with soy sauce. But snubbing on the internet is one thing. Filing an official complaint is quite another. So Italy's Olympic Committee filed a formal complaint. It said that it was unhappy with the referees from the match. Why? because they belonged to South Korea and Italy complained that they are geographically closer to Hong Kong and hence the bias. And it's not only the time, this is not the only time that judges have been under the radar, they have been under the scanner. This year, an Australian surfing judge was removed from the Olympics. You may ask why? 
because he posed on Instagram with an Australian Olympic surfer and the team's coach. Soon the photo blew up on the internet and the International Surfing Association had to comment. They called it inappropriate and the judge Ben Lowe was removed from his post this year. So doping allegations, rapists taking part, allegations against judges and controversies over an Instagram picture. Well, we guess no Olympics is complete without its share of controversies. The Olympics go on till the 11th of August, but it has already seen its fair share of drama. Won by Italy's who hold the 25th spot. The pair's entrance was met with a mixture of applause and jeers from the crowd. Before the match, Fonda Velde was individually introduced and once again, the response was a blend of applause and boos. All players exchanged handshakes before and after the match. An online petition calling for his removal from the Olympic Games garnered 90,000 signatures before his first match. The inclusion of Fonda Velde on the Dutch team has been criticized by various women's and safeguarding groups. He is not staying in the Olympic Village and has opted out of post-match media engagements. Additional security was present upon his arrival in Paris. So how was he allowed to participate? The Dutch Olympic Committee has defended his participation, stating that Van der Velde met the Dutch Volleyball Federation's guidelines for resuming competition after conviction. The NOC emphasized that he has undergone specialist treatment and has been assessed to have no risk of re-offending. They have also highlighted his transparency and deep regret over his past actions. Fonter Velde's selection for the Games has sparked significant controversy and discomfort, but the NOC and the International Olympic Committee have proceeded with his participation despite the ongoing debate and pressure. You've never seen anything like this. An Australian surf judge was removed from the Paris Olympics over a controversial photo. Ben Lowe, a judge on the World Surf League, posed with Australian surfer Ethan Ewing and coach B. Durbage in Tahiti. The photo, captioned, These three stratty boys doing their stuff at the Olympics, caused an uproar online. The International Surfing Association said it's inappropriate for a judge to interact socially with athletes. Australia's Tyler Wright made it to the quarterfinal but was knocked out by American Caroline Marks. Jack Robinson defeated Ethan Ewing in a thrilling quarterfinal and will... And that brings us to the close of the World Primetime Special Olympics Edition. Thank you for making CVR English nationwide strong. We are counting on you for support and you can trust us to bring you the news from the world unbiased and unvarnished. This is Ankriti Sharma signing off for now. But keep watching CVR English.